everyone, I'm Meg with Coastal, and I want to thank you so much for joining us tonight for something really fun and special that we are having right here in our Albany store. I am here with Mindy from Harvest Lane Honey, and we are here to talk to you all about beekeeping tonight. So we're going to be chatting with you about taking care of your hive. We're going to be answering your questions. Mindy here is the expert and we are just really excited to be here. We have a live audience here in our Albany store, and then we will have a bunch of viewers on Facebook. So to any of the viewers in our Albany store, if you have a question, go ahead and just raise your hand, um, and I will get to you and, and try to remember who is, who is next. And anyone watching on Facebook, you can go ahead and just type your questions in the comments, and I will go ahead and monitor those. So uh, just to get us kicked off, Mindy, could you tell us a little bit about Harvest Lane Honey, uh, a little bit of the history of the company and your partnership with us? Yeah, great. So I'm actually, as Meg said, I'm Mindy Waite. Um, I'm one of the founders um, and I'm the CEO of Harvest Lane Honey. We are based out of Salt Lake City, Utah, which ironically I was telling the, the, the audience here is the beehive state for those of you who don't know. Um, so that's kind of fun. Uh, we, we manufacture and produce all the wooden parts of the hives that you see here um, at our 30,000 square foot facility. It sounds a lot like Disneyland and we get people who show up thinking it is like Disneyland. <laughs> But it's not. I mean, it's, it's just a woodworking shop. It's, it's pretty fun, though. It's, it's a fun, rewarding hobby. Um, and so we got started um, about 2008. Uh, we started selling beekeeping supplies. And then in 2013, we kind of taken it to the retail world, thinking that that was a good fit. And uh, we've just been not looking back since. We've just been going forward. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, we are so excited to have you here. And all of the products that you have out in front of us today mm -hmm. and that you're going to be talking about, everyone can head down to their local store and pick those up here at, at their local coastal, correct? Yes. So it's actually, it's, it's beginning to change over. We are shipping the bulk of our orders to coastal here in the next couple of weeks. And so you should begin to see all the products here um, in the next the next little while but yes you can definitely purchase products now i did see that the big the beekeeping kit was at the albany store albany did i say that right that's kind of like <laughs> very okay. like easter that's like albany right. <laughs> so I, I did see that it was down the aisle so you can get and our clothing i did see that there was some clothing down there as well so you you're beginning to see the harvest lane honey products down there and and you can identify it with our yellow box and our big b and so you'll know what it but this will teach you also though what you can also purchase that's already on the shelf um, and start your beekeeping journey as well. Fantastic, awesome. Um, again, to anybody watching, we are here in Albany, so we've had a couple questions about what location we are filming at live. Uh, we're at the Albany location. If you are close and wanna hop down and watch us in person, um, ask your questions in person, you're more than welcome to. We would love to have you here. Um, can you tell us a little bit maybe about a couple of the items that you have here on the table? Yeah, so yeah. let's go ahead and get started. So um, one of the things I would tell you about is our solid bottom board. Um, this is really different than what's kind of on the market. You've seen we've got, um, it's a shorter gap here, which helps with disease prevention and pest prevention. Um, this has got a nice uh, gap here. So that allows, if you live in a high wind area where I live, it's like either it's blowing hurricane force winds or it's not blowing and it's just changing direction. So if you have the need to have to strap your hive down, you have the ability to do so without having to move your hive away um, and get the straps underneath it. So that's a solid board. And when you begin beekeeping, you need to have one bottom board. So that's one style of bottom board. Um, and then the other one here that we sell is a screen bottom board. Um, and the screen bottom board is just like what I said. It's got a nice screen. It has a removable um, slide that comes out of it. And so as you can see here, you can control how much ventilation is in the hive. Um, and the advantageous part to this and why you would want a screen board is because it allows ventilation in hot areas. Uh, we're down in the desert in Utah, so in the, in the summertime I can pull that all the way out, but we'll get a snowstorm in the, in the wintertime and be super cold at negative temperatures. So I want to have a solid board as well. Um, and Oregon and Washington have no exception to that as well. You guys have very, temperamental weather as well um, and so um, so that's a secondary option and it also helps in mites 
um, in preventing mites and helping to control those numbers because the mites can be pulled off the bees by the other bees and then drop down through the screen. We sell a tray that can be slid in there that you can use to collect the mites, fill it with oil, um, and then that way the, the mites can't crawl back up. If you lived on the east coast, that tray can also be used for small hive beetle, but we don't have small hive beetle um, in this area that we have to worry about. So that's a secondary option All right, for so, a bottom. So two different options, um, super easy to use. One with a little more ventilation. Uh -huh. Awesome, fantastic. Yep. So you wanna pick a bottom, and then the next piece that you're gonna go with is you've gotta have what they call a brood um, or a deep, a deep, um, uh, box um, and so in our kits you, that you can find at Coastal Supply or at Coastal you can um, you can see that you have you get a bottom board you get one of these boxes there are um, nine frames and foundation in it all of our foundation are pre-waxed so your bees will gather to it um, you'll notice that some of it has a very fine mist um, our, our color we do we have white we have black and we have gray and we kind of like the gray just because it's in between the black and the white and you can see that the eggs a little bit better. Also in the kits, um, you can, it comes with an in-hive feeder um, and so that's very important as you're building a hive because your bees are going to eat off of that. So what are the things, do you have questions? Um, I actually have a couple people commenting that they're having trouble hearing so we're working oh. on getting the volume up a little bit. Okay. Um, but we will get that, get that fixed for you guys so that um, if that continues, just go ahead and comment um, and let us know, and we will do what we can. Okay. So um, as you're starting out, you're going to start in one box. So as your bees come, you're going to want to pre-order your bees at Coastal as well um, when they're taking orders up until the end of March. Um, and so you'll pre-order your bees, and then you'll, you'll install your bees inside this box, and this will get you started. So um, after your bees are there for a while, um, you'll begin to add on additional boxes, but we'll get into that a little bit later. I'm going to show you what's in this kit. So um, the solid board, you have nine frames with foundation in it. You have an in-hive feeder. Um, then you have a inner cover, which is moisture resistant. It's made out of a moisture resistant board. And it, for those of you who don't know, it acts as a barrier. Bees glue everything down. <laughs> so like if you went out to my hives, like I have 150 hives. If you went to my hives, you couldn't just pick my inner cover up off my hive. You'd have to take a hive tool, which the kit comes with, and you'd have to literally get it in there, jam it in there, and break it open. Oh, wow. Yeah, they make a very, very sticky thing called propolis. Um, one of the store managers I was talking with, or the store personnel I was talking with today, um, she was telling me about how she had gotten a mouse had gotten into her hive, and the bees had killed it, and wrapped it in propolis, and all wow. it was left was like bones. And so I've heard of that happening, and that's crazy. And so, but she was telling me about it. It was very interesting. Um, and then also, we have a galvanized top. So it's very, very heavy duty. It lasts a long time. Um, it's got, it, it'll, it'll age, it'll get a nice patina to it, but it's not gonna fall apart. Um, and so, and then it has the top here where it hangs over the side so that the water, where you guys get a lot of rain, well, the water's not just running into your hive, it's, it's draining off of the hive and away from the wood. So it helps the wood to last a little longer. Yeah, if you have a design on that, that's nice. There's, there's yeah. enough space, that's fantastic. Yeah, so cool. and then also in the kit um, is a smoker and then the hive tool like I showed you and the bee brush an entrance reducer, which ours is a little bit different um, than some of them on the market. And so if you notice here, there is a smaller gap. Um, and what we've kind of found over the years and through our experience is having that smaller gap helps it so that the bees have a smaller area to have to defend. Um, so when you pick up our entrance reducers, our entrance reducers are meant to sit directly in front of the hive so that um, the bees, not the bees, the mice and any other pests can't just push it through. And so okay. that's a big that's a big product difference for us, but we found it to be really successful. And even in warmer months, we'll actually leave our entrance here on this medium, um, the largest opening that we have. Um, and then that way the bees can defend their hive without having to have so many bees out in the front. So that's kind of a preference and we found it to be very successful. You don't have to do that. You can leave it open if you want to. Um, if you want the, uh, the entrance reducer to be able to pass, you can just get some wood shims out of like the, the paint department and put right here and it will raise it up so that they can, the, the, bot or the entrance reducer can be pushed back and forth. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. 
And then the pellets also come, oh. come with? Yes, the pellets also come with, um, and we provide it so that, you know, if you don't have a, like a smoker fuel source, I mean, not everybody's got pine trees, or maybe they live in an urban, or a very urban area, maybe they're in the city. Okay. Um, and then the pellets are used for a smoker, um, and, and that is also included. So everything you see here comes in the backyard beekeeping kit, and that retails under $200. Okay, so. awesome. We did have a question about why the pellets, um, the kits, uh, had the pellets for smoking, so yeah. that that go ahead answer is that. So Nate, yeah. hopefully that answers your question on why the kit has the pellets. Yeah, awesome. just a smoking source for people who don't have access. You can use pine needles, you can use burlap. Um, just some people have limited resources as to what they can use. So we try to gear it towards a backyard beekeeper who may not have um, much of a, a rural lifestyle where they can get product like okay. that. Fantastic and. People can still go ahead and come here and pre-order their bees. Yes. Correctly? Yep. So that's awesome. So yep. uh, three pound package of bees. Yes. Is that right? And two different kinds. Two different kinds. You have okay. Italian and then you have Carniolan. Um, and so either one are great bees and they're going to do well here in any of the areas where the coastal stores are at. Um, Italian bees have less of a swarming tendency but that doesn't mean that they don't swarm. And Carniolans, they like to build up really hot and heavy and, and swarm in the springtime. And so but they do really well as well. Um, they'll out, the queen will also be mated, so she'll be ready to lay as soon as she goes in the hive. And so she gets to start her, you know, her five years of laying eggs um, and right away. Um, and so, um, and those, like I said, should be available for pickup around um, late April, early, early May. Cool. So if you guys are looking to get started with bees and you don't have any yet, if you don't have any of the tools, um, you can go ahead, head into your local store. You can pre-order your bees through the end of the month. And while you're doing that, you can talk with an associate, get a firmer delivery date, and um, go ahead and check out the products too, because this is an awesome setup. I'm assuming this is everything. If I was coming in as, as a first time mm -hmm. beekeeper, I pre-ordered my bees. This kit would pretty much have me have me set. Yep, this correct? would get you 100% started. Now, okay. as your hive grows, you're going to add additional boxes. Um, you'll add another one of these deep boxes, and then you'll also add, as that fills out, then once you go into honey production, you'll add on a medium honey super, and you'll begin to add these boxes as your hive grows until you're ready to extract. So yes, everything you see here on, on, on that hive will get you started. You literally just have to add bees. It says it on our boxing, That's just add bees. Awesome. Um, we do recommend clothing, and Coastal has a great selection of clothing. Um, and so like, we definitely recommend a pair of gloves, and we definitely recommend a suit. And the reason for that isn't just, of course, it's a cell, but what it is is your heart rate is very, um, triggers the bees. And so if you have a high heart rate mm -hmm. and you don't know when you open that hive how your heart rate's <laughs> going to respond when you hear all that buzzing. I think my heart rate would go up. <laughs> yes, and I'm a very, like, very intense person, if you can't tell, and anxious. And so my heart rate's always high. <laughs> so. It, it's just not good. So I have a suit at the very minimum just for your first couple of interactions. Once you know that you interact well with bees, maybe you've been around them before, then you can make that decision. But if you've never done this, we definitely re recommend protective clothing. All right, awesome. We do have a question. Uh, Nate is asking, what should the next size box be on top of this one? It would be one that looks exactly like this. It's called a deep. Um, or a brood box. And so one more of these deep boxes and Coastal sells those as well. They come, all of our product comes painted and finished and assembled. So you can purchase another deep and set it on top and that would be the next size. Cool, that's awesome. Yeah. And you did talk about adding a box um, when bees get to more of a honey production stage. Yeah. Now I'm pretty new to bees yeah. and the whole process. So what's the time frame on that? If a customer comes in, they purchase their bees this spring. What can they kind of expect timeline wise? So let's talk about that. Once you install bees into your hive, you're looking at about one to two months, just depending on how the bees are. If they've got a great leader, a great queen, they're gonna probably just go gangbusters and within a month, they'll draw out. I'm gonna use these frames for example, just so you can see the, the kit, but they'll draw these frames out and they'll have a bunch of, of comb where they'll lay their babies and their brood. And it will be very obvious. You will be able to see that picture. Um, and so that takes about a month. Then you'll add on a second deep. And then because the hive's up and going, you've got more bees in there. They're used to wax production, the brood's hatching. Now you're gonna be quicker. So that, now you're about a month 
till the next one, or maybe less, just depending on how well they're building. And then once you get to honey production, so by the end of like by July, you should you could possibly be into honey production. Wow, just that's depending. Fast. It's very fast if it's producing quickly. It, and sometimes your first year you don't get anything. Don't don't worry about that. Your job your first year is getting yourself established, getting the hive through winter. If you get honey, great. I always tell people don't expect it. So when you get it, you're super surprised. Like, yay, I had a woman say, you told me I wasn't gonna get any honey this year. <laughs> and then she got it. And so I was like, well, I said, you might not. Like, so that's the might that was there. <laughs> exactly. We do have a couple questions asking where the bees come from. Uh, state yeah. beekeeper, yeah. is there any information that you can give us on yeah. that? So our bees come out of North Northern California and they will all come with um, a health certificate um, and they they're they're so they're not coming out of Georgia I know that that's a concern for some people people want Northern California bees because there's two markets that it's either Georgia or Northern, Northern California um, and they're coming out of Northern California awesome fantastic so hopefully that answers all the questions on those and um, can you tell us a little bit more about the product that you have mm -hmm. behind us yeah so what we've got behind us is we've got a couple of things here. I'm going to pull down some of that. Yeah. So we have on the shelf, and I know this is on the shelves now, you've got liquid bee feed, and this is just ready to be made. So I don't know how many of you are like me, and I'm busy, but I like to have a hobby, but I don't have time to dedicate my whole life to that <laughs> hobby. So uh, the liquid bee feed's very easy. So when you get your package of bees, it has, um, it's got sucrose, which yes, I know is sugar and water, um, and it's spearmint and lemongrass, and it's mixed so that it's at like a certain ratio, so it encourages the health of the hive. Um, and so you can just put it in the feeder that um, I showed you inside the hive here. Or if you have an entrance feeder, you can use it there. Um, and then, so it's pre-mixed, ready to go, and ready to serve. So if you're like me and you don't want to go home and make your own liquid feed, this is the way to go. And it's already uh, mixed up in big batches so that it's awesome. perfectly measured. How long will this last a hive? This is probably two servings. Okay. So like if you use the big in hive feeder, if you use an entrance feeder, it'll probably last longer than that because they're the, just the little, little quart jars. Um, but th this will last two servings and depending on the season, like in the springtime when your bees are building up quickly and they're producing, they need the sugar to produce wax. Um, if you get a chance, look at the wax flex that come off bees. It's kind of, it's kind of freaky. If you have texture issues like me, it's freaky because they, they <laughs> use these flex off their body and it's weird. But they take that wax and they produce a lot of it when they very first hatch out. And so they make that wax and they make all the honeycomb in the hive. Um, and so this helps encourage wax building. Um, and so it, it should last a couple of a couple of uses. So it could either be once a week or once a month, just depending on how quickly your bees are eating, the drinking the sugar water. Cool. And awesome. then also we have if you um, if you have multiple hives, we actually have the um, concentrate that we use to make the liquid feed. We have instructions on here. So this will make five gallons of, of this. Um, and so dollar wise, if you're making multiple batches, this is a good option. Um, and then also we have here, um, we have dry feed, which it can, we, we don't recommend using a ton in your hive um, at one time. You can shake it right onto the inner cover. Um, use like about a quarter of a cup and shake it on there because it's kind of like your dog or cat food. If, if they don't use it, it's going to get mildewy in the, in the hive. So you don't, you don't want to encourage mildew if you can avoid it. But you can also mix it with the, um, the liquid feed and make pollen patties and so but we do sell pollen patties individually um, you just break them out of this um, plastic plastic sack here it does have parchment and you can just lay that with the parchment and the pollen patty just right on top of the frames like you see here um, and then your bees will actually pick off the parchment and pull it out the front of the hive and so it's ready to serve um, and we do sell it in pollen or we do have brood building ones. The pollens have less protein in it and so it encourages just overall, um, it just gives them food where the brood has a lot more, um, has a lot more to encourage brood building, has a lot more protein in it. Awesome, that's amazing. We have a couple questions okay. regarding mites and okay. what you can use to kill the mites, what products people might find here in the store on the shelf that yeah. they could use to control that. So with mite treatments, um, we don't personally have a, a treatment that we have, um, we haven't, we found that they become pretty harsh. I, I, and I know this is a very touchy subject with people. People have very strong opinions, but what we found is that we have a hard time 
after the bees are treated with them rebounding and so they usually end up dying anyway. We, we focus more on prevention and sugar treatments. So we use the screen bottom board with the oil in the tray to collect it and then we dust them with like powdered sugar to help them kind of clean themselves off. So preventing it, once you have mites, it's pretty much, that hive's pretty much, it, it's probably not gonna make it, but any of the treatments are pretty harsh on them and, and we have found in our hives that they haven't made it either so okay. that's how we look at it. All right thank you thank you let's see I think that catches us up on the current question so if there's anything else back here that you want to share with us in the meantime. Okay so um, we've got frame grips um, I'll move this down here so I'm not sure if people realize when they get into it how heavy these frames get um, once they get full, but as a frame gets heavy, uh, as it builds out and has comb and stuff and such on it, um, they actually become quite heavy. So if you're like me and you've worked in an office way too many years and now you have, you have no fingerprints because of the paper and you have, you have no dexterity to lift this up and hold it, this can be like 10 pounds on this oh, frame. Wow. And so it can be pretty heavy. Um, and so we've got, um, the, we've got frame grips here that that just allow it to allow you to, to hold on to the frame a little bit easier. Um, we have the little, of course, you got to be like live when you're. We got the little <laughs> bread right. twist on here. That's all right. I didn't realize that these could get so heavy. Yeah. Wow. The, the box itself can get really heavy, so you can you can stick it in here and you're holding it, and then you can inspect it without damaging the comb. Very cool. Yeah. So that's one of the things that you can do. Um, we also have on the side of you here. Yes. Let's grab this. We have a hive stand and we laugh because like when we designed it, it was designed with, with me in mind. Um, I like to laugh if my husband didn't, if my husband wasn't alive, I would live in a condo that was 100% maintenance free that somebody took care of all my problems <laughs> because I'm not handy. I know, I know there's people out there, there's women. And I know that this is not just my problem. Like, so I know that we, it, we came up with this so that it, zero tools, it just slips together. It, it slides together. It's very easy. It has some crossbars, um, which are in the box here, but some crossbars for a frame rest. So you can take your frames out and rest them on here. It will withstand the pressure of the hive. It's got a fiber fiberglass composite as well to help it hold the, the, the weight of a hive because these boxes can weigh 100 pounds or more. Wow. They're very heavy. Wow. And so if you stack, you know, five or six of them up there, I mean, you're looking at 600 pounds, but it can take, it can definitely take the weight. So it's, That's and it awesome. won't, it's got a UV protection, so it won't go brittle in the sun. Cool. Um, so. And it slips together with no tools. No tools. That's incredible. So even no if tools. you are really handy, but like you said, yeah. you love to have a hobby, but you still don't have a ton of time. This is an awesome thing to have. Yeah, it is. It's very nice because it allows like the wind to pass yeah. through it. So it doesn't, it allows you to wrap your hive. Everything fits flush. It, it, it supports it so that the hive is balanced. And there, it's really important actually to have your hive up off the ground. At least, I mean, if you're not purchasing a hive stand, go into the hardware department and purchase some cinder blocks or some, um, some posts to get it off the ground. Now, since I don't have a lot of bee knowledge, why exactly is that? Because what happens is, is skunks love bees and they're like a little buffet for them. And so if they're able to get them off the ground, then the bees are, are able to defend themselves a little bit better. And then also you have possums and raccoons that will bother them. But also you, if you live in an area with snow or a large amount of rain, you don't want the rain just flooding into your hive. You need to elevate it to get it off of there. Fantastic. That makes a lot of sense. So yeah. This is very cool. Very Thank cool. You. Yeah. Awesome. Set this over here. Fantastic. So all sorts of things. If you get some bees, start with a package, mm -hmm. you know, as you kind of grow, you really can grow this into a fun hobby. There's, yeah. there's add-on things that you can get and expand your hive. That's just incredible. Yeah, we call it geeking out items. <laughs> we like to, I mean, as you get started, you get like the geek out. You're like, oh, I, I need to have this other hive tool, <laughs> even though I only, I have one already. It's very efficient. But I, I like to tell people, I love like the hive tool is like the main, where did I put it? It's like the main tool. It's like when I fly out to different trade shows, I don't like to um, take a box knife, obviously, for obvious reasons. You can't on your carry-on. But if I always tell uh, my team, hey, if you at least have a hive tool for me in the box that meets me at this trade show, I can get into it with my keys, get that, and then break everything else open to, from there. So very, very handy tool. You'll use this a, a lot. Very cool. And this also comes in the kit. I know oh, you yeah. touched on it, but can you 
explain a little bit more about how you would use yeah. this and when? Yeah, so this is a bee brush. It's very, very soft. Um, it's got a synthetic hair. And what it what it's for is when you're stacking this hive back together and say I'm inspecting and I look at all my frames, you're not gonna have floods of bees necessarily coming out, but you're gonna have a few that are here. And so since we're into preserving bees and not killing them, we're gonna try to brush them away so that we can restack the components and you're gonna have more hair. Um, without having to, without squishing bees as you're putting your hive back together. Oh, okay. And then like I was showing on the hive tool, it, it crowbar, it, you pry bar out the propolis here because they use, they take tree sap is what they do and they make it into a glue. Um, and so it's very, very sticky. So think of like pine sap and how sticky that is on a tree. Mm -hmm. But then they do that with all the frames. And so if you walked into a hive right now, you couldn't just pull a frame out. You would be prying it out. Um, and then you've got to clean, you use it to clean comb. So sometimes you get very, um, very efficient bees that build a lot of comb. And so as soon as you pry this open, you have a whole bunch of comb on the other side. So you got to oh. scrape all that off. Yeah. And then you move on and you've got a whole bunch on the, um, frames and you got to scrape all that off and you just clean it up. It's good hive maintenance. Now, good for you because you get to eat the honey because it's <laughs> usually honey filled and it doesn't have babies and it's, it tastes good. So that's that's one of the sweet, sweet rewards of doing it. Fantastic. But. That's incredible. That's awesome. Um, is there anything else that you wanted to touch on about these products? or introducing bees into a new hive that you think our customers should know? Yeah, we can talk about introducing bees into a hive. So I, I apologize, I should have a package here, but um, let's, let's find something for, okay, so let's pretend that this is a package of bees. It comes in a, a square box. Um, you can see, actually, do you have that poster? And maybe yeah, we can show we that do. to them. Yeah, so um, that one doesn't have the picture on it. That's okay. There, a package of bees comes in like a wooden box and it's got screen on each side. Um, and so when your bees come, there is a feeder can inside of it. So you're going to pull the feeder can out, take the queen and move her over. And she comes in a little teeny tiny, little teeny tiny box. Now I'm, I'm going to repeat this four times. <laughs> don't release the queen. Don't release the queen. Did they tell you don't release the queen? And do not release the queen, please. So when you take the little box out, there's gonna be a little tiny cork at the bottom of her cage. You're gonna take a marshmallow or maybe a three musketeer bar if you don't have marshmallows. And marshmallows, that was very hillbilly of me. Did you hear that, marshmallows? Um, so um, you'll take that, that nougat or marshmallow and you're gonna shove it in, replacing the cork and shove it in, not release your queen. Shove it in the end of, of the queen box. Then you're gonna take her you're going to take a couple of these frames out. You're going to take her and you're going to wedge her. This will pop. This will pop open here and you're going to take it's got a little metal strap. You're going to take her box and slip it over the frame here. And then you're going to want to make sure she's faced outward so that she can breathe. If you face her so she's facing out looking towards me, then then it will suffocate her on the on the frames, but if she's facing the other towards the side of the frame, then she won't suffocate. So you take a couple of these frames out. So once you've got her on there, then you've got this box of bees and then you just start shaking them inside um, the box here. Now, they're really active and they've been in the cage for a few <laughs> days. And so like definitely have a bee suit at this point and they're going to be buzzing everywhere. And in fact, I don't necessarily recommend having the kids out there unless they have protective clothing. Um, and then when you get it done and you're done dumping them in there because there's so many of them, you may not be able to put these frames back in. And if you can't, because they haven't dispersed out yet. So if you can't, don't worry about it. Um, you can come back and put them in a week later. But just go ahead and close the hive back up and then do not check that hive for one week because otherwise they'll kill the queen possibly. Um, and so do not release the queen don't check for a week. Now, if you forgot to take the cork out, you could do that. But what they'll do is, and within that week, the other bees will free her and they'll eat through that candy. And then what, it creates like a bond for them. And so they eat through the candy and then she'll start working in there. A lot of people get hung up on inspecting her and knowing where she's at once they've checked. Mm -hmm. But we always say, if the hive seems active and good, don't worry about looking for her on the first inspection. You may or may not see her just because she's going to be hidden, they're going to keep trying to hide her, you may damage her. So if everything looks good and she seems active, then don't worry about it. Fantastic. That's good information. I had never heard, we've done a few lives 
and chats before about bees and I hadn't heard of doing it that way so that's, that's really cool. Yeah and I believe we've got some videos that we'll, we'll link up with you guys awesome. so you guys can have that for Fantastic. the customers to, to see. Yeah this is kind of like the perfect teaser for the start of bees coming in. Yeah. So, Definitely Fantastic. Fun. And again, people can pre-order their bees mm -hmm. still right now. So you guys can pre-order your bees. You can walk around, um, check out your local stores. You'll see things like this hung up. Um, it lays out all the information. You get a three pound package. It's $149.99. So it's a great mm -hmm. price to get started yep. on this. And um, two different kinds of bees to choose from. Mm -hmm. And they're both very first time beekeeper, yeah. user friendly, correct? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. Go ahead. My neighbor already has bees. Is there a certain distance that I have to be away from you know, having a hive on this property you know, where I can cut my nose? Or is it an ideal spacing? Does it mean how far away do I need to be or does it not matter? That's a great question. I'm going to just repeat it so that everybody watching on Facebook Live can go ahead and hear it. And our audience asked um, if his neighbor has bees, is there a certain distance away that he should place his hive? Not necessarily. Um, we keep our bees in close proximity. We have like four hives on a pallet and multiple pallets in one yard. Um, to be a good neighbor though, that does touch on like how to, so you don't need to worry about them crossing over to each other, but to be a good neighbor, and uh, maybe your, your neighbors don't have bees and you're worried about being a bad neighbor, make sure you provide a water source for them. If you have like a creek or, or natural water on your property, that's great. Um, you don't have to worry about providing a water source, but if you're in a more dry, arid area, like we literally have to water our bees just like we would our cattle because we don't have just natural creek beds occurring. Um, so provide a water source for them. And then the front part of the hive is the runway. So it's the landing strip. They're gonna go the same direction every single time, in and out, in and out. So take, don't face this towards your neighbor's pool because they're <laughs> going to hate you. So like face it towards the fence so that it go, they fly up and over. And also it goes for your own kids. It goes for your own family. If you've got a pool out there, don't put it right there by it. They're gonna go to the pathway of least resistance. So put it towards the back of the property, away from people and active areas. Um, we keep multiple hives on an acre property. We'll have up to 12 hives um, and we don't have a problem with them. They're a little bit more active in the spring um, and in the fall when there's honey and then when they're trying to get back into spring buildup but we don't have a problem with it. You just provide a water source, make sure your entrance is faced away from play areas and kids areas, and you'll be a good neighbor. Fantastic, thank you. We do have a question online, and Wesley is asking, does the queen come marked? No, we don't mark our queens. Um, sh you can mark her after, after you get her home. Um, and the reason for that is it's very hard to know which ones are marked once they come to the store. And if I get a marked and you don't want a marked, that's a hard, you can't just take that marking off. So it, it's just easier, it's for it's simplicity not to mark. That, and we don't want to damage her. The more we have to handle that queen, the more chance that she can be damaged. So we like to handle her as less as possible. Perfect. We do have another question, and that is, does the hive color matter if it's dark or light, mm -hmm. uh, anything like that, any specifics? Nope, it doesn't necessarily matter. A lot of people, white is more soothing to bees, so you see a lot of white hives, a lot of white, of white suits. We do recommend white clothing. The hive color doesn't necessarily matter. Ours come, our hives come painted, um, and so you've got two coats of exterior paint on them, and we use the latex-based paint, so it's a water-based paint. Um, and then you can go ahead and paint it. If you wanna paint the prettiest colors of flowers or whatever you want. I've seen some cool hives and people doing it, and so it's already primed for you. So if you want something else for a different color, I've seen some purple hives, it doesn't matter. Um, if you wanna distinguish what your hives look like, that that's it's up for you so that's, that's the fun, fun part i hadn't thought about that but that yeah. would be really fun it is pretty very fun. cool awesome well we will probably go ahead and wrap up here in about five minutes so if you guys have any last minute questions either from the audience or online go ahead and ask those um you did mention cleaning a little bit with mm. the hive tool yes uh is there anything that people should be doing to clean their hives beyond that? 
Um, just not a kind whole of lot. general. Not a whole lot. If you get, you know, rogue comb built on here, you might do a little scraping there. If your hive dies out at the end of the season, you may want to scrape the cone off and start again. Um, it just depends on what happened to the hive. But overall, hive and beekeeping is very low maintenance. You never check your hive more than one time a week. Um, and in the winter months, like maybe you kind of inspect it, but you're not doing a full inspection and you go months in between. If it's been snowing or raining a lot, you won't open that hive up. So it's very low maintenance. Um, but, and as far as having to clean, other than the rogue comb, not a lot of cleaning. Um, if you get a mouse in there like the store manager or the store <laughs> personnel is telling me about, I, I was like, I'm gonna use your story today because that's just amazing. So, because I haven't had to deal with the mouse situation, but I do know that they do that. So you, you'll want to clean out any debris. Sometimes you get a few spiders hanging out and hiding in there. So you want to get rid of those. Um, you want to clean away from the entrance, um, any, any grasses that have grown up. We get a lot of the cheat grass that grows mm -hmm. up. So if you get weeds that grow up, you're gonna to wanna to weed eat around the area so that they can get in and out. Cool. And we do have a follow-up question to that, and that is, is there any specific way to clean the tools? Yeah, well, not necessarily. Like, um, this is like a stainless steel, and so you can just wipe it off. They, they're not too bad. They'll get propolis on them, um, and you'll see it. Your hot, your, your suit, um, that is one thing that you can do. You can wash it. So if you want washing instructions, what we, we recommend is if you have an agitator in your, in your washing machine, just put it in like a lingerie bag or a washing bag and just, you know, zip it up. And then just so that the hood doesn't get wrapped around the agitator and ripped. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but then you can also, if you don't have an agitator or you have a front load or you just go to the, you know, the laundromat, you can just put it in there and wash it. Um, and then we also recommend that you dry, tumble dry on low as well. Fantastic, thank you. Uh, one I think more have a question. Oh, yes. What's the purpose of the smoker? Oh. All right, good question. The question is what's the purpose of the smoker? Yes, the purpose of the smoker is to help calm the bees down. It, it kind of, it's very soothing for them. Um, we used to have a state bee inspector who would say, you know, everybody says they don't want to smoke their bees until the day they found out that they should have smoked their bees. Um, and I agree with that statement because, you know, bees overall, like, it helps to calm them down. It hides your pheromones from them. I mean, everybody showers, everybody's got a scent to them, and it helps disguise you from them, but it also helps them to think, okay, this is just like natural, it, it, it's what it's, it's occurring. And then every time you come back and bring smoke out to them, um, it, they actually become almost accustomed to it. Um, and so we highly recommend smoking. You just kind of smoke across the front here. Once you crack the hive, you smoke here. Um, you use the smoker pellets as a fuel. And then to extinguish it, you can just smother it by shoving like a, a rag down the, the, the tip of the smoker. Um, and then that way it will extinguish with it. You can keep your smoking fuel in there without ruining it. Cool, awesome, great question. We have one more question and that is, what kills the whole hive except for mites? Is there anything else that you could think of? Well, uh, there's a lot of different things that can kill a whole hive. Yellow jackets and wasps, oh. they are very, like we, wasps will rip the bees apart. Um, there's been a lot of things with colony collapse where the bees just die or they just fall, they just, they just disappear. Um, so there's different things that will affect them. Mites and wasps, there are some foul broods. Um, usually those are pretty rare though. Uh, but there are instances of them. Um, there's all, wax moths are disgusting. They smell terrible, and they will destroy. Like the the, the bees will just leave with those as well. Um, and so there's just there's a few different things. Uh, skunks will kill off an entire hive. They think it's like a buffet for them, and so they'll kill off your hive as well. Hmm. Wow. Is there anything that? beekeepers can do to prevent those things from happening? Yeah, keeping your hive raised, using skunk fencing. We were just talking mm -hmm. with one of the store personnel about how there's, um, um, Coastal actually sells um, electric poultry fences. Uh -huh. So that's perfect for your beehives as well because that will help to keep the smaller predators away from them just like it would chickens. Um, keeping them in a fenced area if you have bears. Um, and as far as pests go, I mean, just keeping the area clean around them. Um, because then that way you can prevent other, and checking them once a week and cleaning up the, the bird combs and, and just keeping the hive clean overall. Fantastic, awesome, awesome. It looks like that was our last question. So I just okay. wanna thank you so much for being here. No. You shared so much wonderful information with us. I learn so much every time I do these and I think it's just amazing that you can get this whole kit right here. It has mm -hmm. everything. So for somebody like me who doesn't have a lot of bee knowledge, 
it's nice to see something that makes me feel confident. Like, yeah. I could go out and get bees if that was something that I wanted. Yeah. Wanted to. And there's some there's some different tutorials if you want more information on our YouTube channel. We have videos on how to wear your suit and how to use your smoker and how to extinguish it. So awesome. check it out. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thank you so much to everybody that hung out with us tonight and watched this. Thank you so much to Mindy from Harvest Lane Honey. Again, um, she has been here to share all this wonderful information, talk about these products that you can get, and tell us how to take better care of your hive. So thank you so much. We really appreciate it. We appreciate you guys for hanging out with us tonight. Mm -hmm. It was a lot of fun. I know I enjoyed it. I hope you did too. And if you have any other questions that maybe you think of later, you can go ahead, hop onto this thread, comment with them. Um, we will go ahead, reach out to Mindy and get the answers for you. So definitely if you think of something down the road, go ahead and comment and we will get back to you. So thank you so much for hanging out with us and we will see you.